Three Denver City Council incumbents lost their runoff elections this week. Mary Beth Sussman from District 5 was defeated by Amanda Sawyer, 58% to 42%. The race in District 9 was much closer with Albus Brooks losing to his opponent Candy C. DeBaca by just 700 votes. And Wayne New lost by six points to his opponent's Chris Hines for the District 10 seat. The three-way incumbent defeat is the first in modern history. David, uh, uh, in Candy C. DeBaca, you definitely have a very progressive, I think that's probably even playing with the term of what you can define as progressive, uh, uh, person coming onto the uh, council. I don't know if her other non-incumbents join her in any shape or form in that kind of beliefs, but it's definitely going to have a different feel. Five new faces the council. How does that affect Denver? Well, I, I, overall, it, it, it's a good thing. We've had previous city council cycles where basically everybody got reelected and nothing was close. So, you know, sort of like the, the Soviet Politburo. Um, and, and so that this, this, this was good that there were real races and challengers won some of them. And in some cases, like the, I think Chris Hines, uh, it was just, this was the guy with, with more energy getting out there, connecting with, with voters more than, than the incumbent had. On the uh, Albus Brooks versus Candy C. DeBaca, I guess I have, I have mixed feelings. I'm, I'm happy Albus Brooks lost uh, because of his bullying of a uh, coffee shop in his district that put up a, a sign that was a joke and everybody got in their usual I am so offended uh, mode about that. And he was down there leading the protests against him. That's a it's impro it's beneath the, the dignity or the leadership role uh, for a city councilman to be that kind of bully. On the other hand, the, the downside of him losing was his opponent won, uh, Candy C. DeBaca, and she is somebody f who, you know, in the political spectrum, you would say, well, here's Lisa Calder. Compared to her, Lisa Calderon is a hard right wing extremist Fox News uh, TV personality. You know, she said that the way we allocate labor is wrong. But what, what she was saying was like private employers voluntarily hire people who choose to work for companies and it sorts it out and you go work for the employer you want if they'll pay you. And she said, no, that, that, that's a terrible idea. Uh, we should, the, we, the community, by which she means the government, should be in charge of labor allocation. The, uh, the classic, you know, she didn't say she was a communist, but that's the East German type slave labor model of how we allocate uh, labor. And she is in no sense a progressive in the true meaning of that word. She is absolutely a regressive uh, who wants to return to the failed uh, lack of freedom of employment uh, that existed in much more uh, primitive and uh, less free societies. Eric, yet again, you have to follow another milk toast, middle of the road opinion from David, so good luck with that. But uh, do you see this as a new era for the city council? Yes, it is a new era for the city council. Just two quick thoughts off the top. Number one, Candy C. DeBaca is going to be a name that we talk about around this table frequently over the years. She will push the left flank. She will be a lightning rod. She will represent a whole lot of people who don't think they have a voice now. Uh, the Denver Socialist Party or whatever, there's some website out there, and they were all in on this after her victory uh, Tuesday night. So this is a name that we will, and it will give us plenty of fodder, and that's all to the, uh, to the positive. A quick factual uh, clarification on our first go around, uh, just so we can avoid some letters to the station. Hancock's win was 12 points. It was not 8 points. Thank you. Very um, good point. And uh, I think we just ought to go on the record on that. The magnitude of this city council turnover is, is significant. In the last 32 years, since 1987, there were a total, grand total, cumulative of three council people who lost re-election. Then earlier this week, three of them did it in one night. So that is a dramatic uh, statement. I regard that the, the council election was the tell here. Uh, it was what the, the theme of this election, and it was an anti-incumbent, anti-developer, anti-city hall sentiment. It was a sentiment that would have washed away Michael Hancock in other circumstances, but a combination of the resources he had at his disposal, some of the inexperience of his still able but inexperienced opponent, other factors at play saved his skin. But the real message of that night was those council races. And don't forget that Michael Hancock lost uh, who I regard as his two key allies and leaders on council.
those being Albus Brooks and Mary Beth Sussman. They were the ones who were most in communication with him, often carrying his water, and they are both gone. So it's going to be a new era between the third and fourth floor of City Hall. Natasha, we have a strong mayoral uh, system of government in Denver. That's mm -hmm. not saying anything about Mayor Hancock or any other mayor. It's just the way it's done. Most of the levers of power rest in the mayor's office. So do all these changes in the council mean something for the city of Denver? Yes, if you worry about potholes, it absolutely does. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's one of, one of the things. Sidewalks and potholes come under city council. Um, what, what I think is interesting here is that there, we're spending a lot of time right now analyzing what happened in this election, trying to draw conclusions. And, of course, the, the turnover of these three incumbent seats is a big deal. But the, the question for me always as a reporter is to look at where do we stop historically? You know, when do we start to say there's been a reset? And I think with the this election in Denver, we might be able to say that. There has been such a population increase. The growth changes that have happened in the city have truly changed. So are these three seats turning over purely a referendum on, on what happened with growth pains in the city? Or is it more an example of where Denver is going to be in the future? Is this something we're going to start seeing in council races? We're going to see with the population increases that we have, um, with the interest that nationally candidates, um, we're seeing more and more candidates running for races. Is this just, just going to become par for the course? In which case, we should probably all get some sleep and rest up for the next election because it's going to be busy. <laughs> <laughs> rest up before an election. You are a crazy optimist. I, I think that's just fantastic, Natasha. Uh, Patty, wrap it up for us. Is this a monumental day in the history of the Denver City Council or just this is the way politics is in 2019. Well, considering how dull most city council days are, yes, it's monumental. As I drove up here, I saw the Albus Brooks sign and the fact that Albus lost, who was kind of the doppelganger of Hancock in some ways. He, you know, had helped push the urban camping ban. He was kind of looking as the heir apparent and that he lost just showed how vulnerable Hancock was if he had had a tough, tough opponent. And I think people are kicking themselves now that they didn't take that chance.